We're going to get started now. It is uh, Monday, November 25th, and this is a regular school board meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry, we'll do that after. <laughs> we did that last time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, Janet, could we do roll call? I'm sorry, we did it out of order. <laughs> uh, Charles Black Lance? Here. Reed Campbell? Tom Hagland? Here. Sue Kern? Here. Ruth Nelson? Here. Bob Nystrom? Four of the six present? Thank you. We have a quorum. Um, we're going to start with the approval of the agenda as amended. Presented. As presented. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a first from Director Haglin, a second from Director Nelson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Then district recognitions. Very good. I'd like to begin tonight by thanking the Forest View Middle School parents, teachers, Beth Cooper, Tommy Andreessen, Brian Stark, and Robin Knudsen, and students Eric Makita and Marcel Wargaki, Gargoki, for helping to provide funds and work to complete the new addition to the school forest. This spot, which is located on the northwest corner of Fifth of the fifth grade soccer field now provides a great spot for fires with two fire pits, seating, and shelter for storing wood. Thank you everyone for your volunteerism to make that happen. And that's all I have tonight. Alrighty, thank you. Um, next is the time where we have public input. Is there anybody who wanted to come before the board today? Okay, thank you. I will just move right on. Building project update. Well, good evening. This is our bond improvements update for Wednesday, November 25th, 2019. Uh, on our agenda, we have uh, wave one project updates. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about High School North Campus, give an update on the Mindali plumbing plan permit review. Uh, then wave two project updates as well. Uh, with Lowell Elementary construction documents being reviewed and Riverside Elementary construction documents being reviewed. So we'll start with the Brainerd High School. Um, as you can see, we're starting to go vertical. We're coming out of the ground. Um, we're going to see a lot of change over the next few weeks. Uh, steel erection is commencing in Area 3 and 1. Area 2 auditorium footings are complete. Area 2 exterior footings and foundations are continuing. Uh, area 3, which is main level, Area D, uh, we're doing some demolition. Uh, we're doing this to, uh, for, uh, it gives us uh, the ability to tie in our structural steel to the existing building. Uh, something that we needed to do. We got to move those kids over to South Campus, uh, move those classrooms. So Scott's done a great job of facilitating that. Um, Scott, if you want to give us a quick update on our Mendoli plumbing plan update, that'd be great. Absolutely. Not used to speaking with the microphone, so excuse me if I hold it too close or too far away. But uh, just to continue on with what uh, Damien had just mentioned, uh, we did get into Area 3 a little bit early, and kudos to the teaching staff and building grounds for being able to facilitate that move and getting the kids over across the South Campus. So uh, that was awesome. Uh, we did so in a timely manner. We have construction crews going in there, demos complete. Um, we started putting our beams through the roof today, so. Uh, Without them, you know, getting that space ready for us, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So that's that was hugely beneficial for the construction project. Um, 
And then just backing up for the Mendoli plumbing plan review update. So I did speak to our plan reviewer this morning. We have not received the official approval. And in speaking with her this morning, uh, all indications would lead to we're going to get a further request for information, uh, which just means that it hasn't been approved yet. They're, they're seeking out more information to finalize their review. Um, so at this point, it seems to be focused around the roofs and the roof drainage, specifically in the new areas. Uh, and until I get the, the plan review comment letter back, that's all the more information I have. Okay. Any questions? Okay. We still have time, so that doesn't delay the project. No, it's not going to delay the project. Uh, all the work that was associated with that, we've pushed that into the summer of next year. So that was mainly tying into Fifth Street, uh, specifically our fire water, stormwater, and our sanitary sewer lines. So it just changes the phasing a little bit, but the Anderson Brothers has been great <coughs> working with us, and they're good with doing it next year. Um, so it's not a big concern there. We will uh, be putting, pre-installing a couple of storm structures uh, just because with the steel structure going up, it's going to cut off our access to the courtyard. So we do have to get those in, but we'll leave some leeway in there in case we have to make some fine-tune adjustments. Wells Concrete is also immobilized to the site today. They're installing helical acres for uh, preparing for erection <coughs> of the actual panels, which will begin after the holiday weekend here. So, yeah, Monday you'll start seeing the precast panels going up. So it will be one of the larger structures in town, and it will be very cool. So if you can take a detour by, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Are you guys taking pictures as you go along of all this? We mm -hmm. have been taking pictures, Good, yes. because every time I go by, it looks so much neater than the day before. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's really cool now because it's actually going up, so you can see something. Yeah. Before, it was just, when you drive by, and it's just a bunch of dirt. Now, you can actually see the structures and how it's going to actually look, and you can start to get the feel of the, you know, the spaces of the room. So it's pretty neat. On the 9th, when we do our tour, it'll be very cool. Every school that I go to, the contractors are really excited about the nights of their tours and having it be a tip-top shape Absolutely. Uh, for the public to see. So, good. Yeah, it'll be really nice. There'll be precast panels and a bunch of structural steel up, so we'll be able to actually walk through and check out all the rooms. Good. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> New Baxter Elementary, um, we're working on vapor barrier and insulation, um, framing and sheathing. On the cafeteria wing, um, we're roofing at the media core. Uh, mechanical and electrical roughings are uh, being completed at the classroom wing. Um, and we, I believe the roofing is completed or near completion on the classroom wing. So um, a lot of good work's been happening out there. Uh, the team's been doing a great job. Uh, there's a lot of rough-ins going in as well. So uh, the classroom wing is, kind of, is our critical path on the project. And uh, so um, it's great to see the progress on that. We're definitely, uh, that job is doing very well on the schedule. Uh, weekly, weekly progress meetings on site on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. Um, does anybody have any questions about New Baxter Elementary? Okay. Uh, Nisswa Elementary, uh, we're working on the insulation and vapor barrier as well. It's a theme right now, that time of year. Interior framing and rough ends are, are going on. Um, exterior masonry has been in, is being installed in the classroom edition. Uh, a lot of good progress there, a lot of good contractors. Still a little behind schedule, but we still are working on uh, picking up those days. So, um, but uh, there's a lot of uh, good engagement good engagement with that project. So, uh, we have weekly progress meetings on site on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. Please come. I know Lane just came last week. She was, got to see, got to see the crews on, on site, so that was great. Mm -hmm. So, and I think you guys did an appreciation lunch today. Today, yeah. yeah. Heidi so. and I both got to go up there, and the kids had pizza for all the contractors today. So it was a nice opportunity to say thank you mm -hmm. so for all the work that they're doing and remind everyone that we really want everybody to be safe and during these projects and just to continue doing great work. So, yeah. Awesome. Great week with Thanksgiving to be thankful for all the work that everyone's doing for the district. So, yeah. 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 Any questions on this one? Forest View Middle School, um, not a lot of change. We're substantially complete, and we're waiting for metal panels to be installed over Christmas vacation. Um, 
holiday break. Uh, we did do some brushing uh, to, to uh, accommodate the entries to the school, so there's better visibility for, for, for getting onto Knollwood, so, which, is, which is good. Um, other than that, not a lot of change. Damien, one thing we might want to talk about earlier, um, we had discussed a little bit about some of the floor coverings that need to be uh, replaced at Forest View. Has anything been looked into as far as those, or are they on a wait list? Or so I have. I have the, the existing plans, and mm -hmm. I'll get a rough order of magnitude to you. Mm -hmm. um, just got to put up some budgetary conceptual pricing. I'll get that. We, we want to look at pursuing it. We certainly can. Um, the thought was earlier that we'd maybe wait till this coming summer. Okay. It'd probably make the most, most sense to, to do that if we chose to take on that work. Great. I, I guess I brought it up just because I saw the screen and with new people on, on some of our projects and such, and you included that I, I want to make sure that we don't forget about that because yeah. Yeah. we know that there definitely is a need on that second floor in particular. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I have a quick question regarding Forest View. The uh, southern parking lot, I think that's where the faculty and staff park mm -hmm. during the day. The exit of that, which is over by the softball fields, mm -hmm. the, the exit of that parking area. And um, when I enter it, uh, I coach uh, a few different teams for, for Brainerd. And when I come rolling on in about roughly 5 or 5.30 or whatnot when a lot of the other people are coming out. One thing I've noticed is that that, that entrance and exit to that parking area um, from the side street, which is also then becomes the, the bus parking area, mm -hmm. it, it's, it seems narrow, whereas right now even with, with dry concrete or pavement, I worry about I have to slow down and turn really tight so as not to hit a person coming out of that same parking lot. And I have a concern that as it gets icier, if that, with even more traffic pressure coming in there and not coming in from where it used to be able to come in from the horseshoe so there wasn't quite as many people, mm -hmm. but it seems pretty, um, pretty tight, pretty congested there. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely take a look at that mm -hmm. and, and see. Yeah. Because once in a while, like, my pickup truck isn't even that big, but when I meet, like, a F-350 or whatever, then one has to kind of choose to go first, and then and then I can enter the, the parking okay. parking area, and it just doesn't seem... I just worry if it gets icy. Okay. We'll definitely address that concern. Take a thank, look at it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Charles. Yeah. Uh, Harrison Elementary, uh, exterior brick facade is ongoing. Uh, interior steel stud framing and rough-ins are happening at the administration suite and then at first and second level on the addition. Um, sheetrock, mud, and tape are complete in the kitchen. Interior stair one is being erected. Uh, the exterior brick on the north side is, is looking to get commenced. Uh, and roofing is ongoing. Um, weekly, weekly progress meetings on site Thursdays at 11, a, 11 a.m. Um, things have been going well out there. We've got a lot of good momentum. so. Um, definitely, definitely. Again, like I said before, right, the ship's been righted, and and uh, so Kyle and his team has been working really hard on that. So that's good. Okay. Garfield Elementary uh, conditional use permit has been approved by the Planning Commission. Uh, there'll be a City Council meeting in December to finalize. Um, that went well. Um, we have a pre-bid conference scheduled for December second. And then our bid opening date is set for December 10th. So, so all good. 2 o'clock on the 10th. 2 o'clock. Exciting day. Mm -hmm. Right? 2 yeah. All right. Um, and now Baxter Early Childhood, conditional use permit. We're working on serving and replatting. Um, the application deadline is December 17th. Um, so yeah, Baxter has been very good to work with for us. Uh, I know Justin has said a lot of good things as far as um, how things have been going. Uh, we're preparing for bid solic solicitation in January, and uh, we're doing that. That's, uh, that project will be starting later in the summer, so we're strategically letting that one bid last. Uh, we also want to have it go through planning commission in case there's anything we want to, anything we want to pick up that the city wants to require or add to the project, so. All right, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Mark Needham and uh, let him talk about Lowell Elementary. 
Okay, Lowell Elementary. Um, we're, we went for the conditional use permit last week uh, and it was approved by the Planning Commission. Um, and we are getting ready to uh, go out for bid here uh, next week. Um, I'm gonna go to the next page and we'll start getting into some of the plan review and some of the documents and what, what we're looking at. So here on the, the lower level, um, can you hear me okay through this? Things working? Okay, excuse me. The lower level, uh, just a brief overview of what's um, anticipated here on this floor. There's a uh, classroom, or excuse me, let me back up real quick. So there's two phases to this. I think that's important to talk about. There's the new addition, which is the gym and the um, entryway, uh, and then the classroom tower, which is kind of the north uh, side of the drawing that you see here on the uh, screen, and then the remodel space uh, for the south half, or the bottom half of the sheet here. Um, so to orient us uh, going through the lower level here, the remodel space, uh, looking at classrooms, uh, art, art and science uh, spaces all the way towards the left-hand side of the, the drawings. Um, and then you can see that the, there's a uh, the new classroom tower kind of on the, the northern half or the top half of that drawing um, for lower level. Any questions about lower level layout or anything like that before we move on to the next floor? Okay. Here on the first floor, uh, again, the remodel space, uh, classroom layout and updates there. And then uh, notably for the, the remodel, there's the kitchen and cafeteria space that is uh, gonna uh, go in there. And then towards the top half of the drawing, you'll see the gymnasium, um, the full-size full size gymnasium there, and the, uh, again, the continuation of the classroom tower, as well as some administrative space. Uh, in the new additions. Any questions on first floor? Okay, second floor. And second floor, uh, the uh, new addition there again on the half or the top half of the drawing and the uh, lower half for the remodel space uh, uh, for the classroom updates and uh, additions there. And kind of the smallest footprint out of the three floors, but any questions on that one? Okay. Next page. Going to the, exter the exterior of the building, there is a uh, parking lot that is uh, going into the south or on the south part of the um, uh, south part of the site uh, here. Plan right uh, to add additional parking, and you can see on that one-way street that's where the parent uh, pickup drop-off is going to be, and then around the corner there. Uh, is going to be the bus pickup and drop off. In addition to that, there's going to be um, new landscaping and entryway. Uh, that's what that kind of the diagonal sidewalks are there uh, leading to the front of the building and how um, you, know, you gain access to the new entryway of the building. Any questions about landscaping or site and civil or, or access or anything like that? Has that been made a one-way street now? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. And those angled uh, sidewalk sets for to meet ADA because there's quite a bit of elevation mm -hmm. change between the, the, mm -hmm. the city sidewalk and the building. So, mm -hmm. so that's why those are there the way they are. And this plan that you see before you tonight is the plan that we brought forward for the conditional use permit to the Planning Commission last week. So mm -hmm. it would need full board approval yet from the City Council, but it passed the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. which... Again, we want to reiterate that we've had just some great collaboration with the City of Brainerd too um, regarding these conditional use permits and we thank them for that partnership. Agreed, yes. All right, let's go on to the next page here. So uh, included this rendering just to help uh, kind of visualize the space. It's one thing to see it in 2D, but another thing to see it in 3D. Um, so we're looking at the south uh, facade there. You can see the branding pylon that's uh, kind of been consistent across the school district and, and how we you know, signify the entrance to the building. You can also see the new addition for the gym and the new addition for the classroom tower and some, some of the surrounding spaces that go with it. So just kind of to help bring all that together and see, see a, little more, uh, a, little, a little more detail or understanding how it goes together. Uh, any questions about uh, Lowell and where we're at with that? So the outdoor area, for the, the, I see the playground and then the basketball court, and that whole area in between there is also outdoor open play area. 
Yes. Yeah, so if, if you're talking directly behind the new the newly added gym um, and the the classroom tower, yes, that's all uh, going to be uh, grass and paved spaces. Yep. On the the one drawing, you have the little rounded part there, mm -hmm. and on that one, there isn't the rounded part. Yeah, and uh, so. If there's any confusion about that, I apologize. So I, I wanted to show the building because it, it really helps bring it together. The site has adjusted a little bit since uh, these renderings were done. But you'll see that there's two entryways into the parking lot, and that's uh, not consistent with the, uh, the new the newest layout. Right. Uh, what I wanted to focus on was the blue uh, branding pylon to really get a feel and sense for that. So, Damien, if you go back one page, you can see. This is the layout for the, the site more okay. more accurately represented. Great. What is going to, how is the, the old gym going to be used okay. again? That's going to be the new cafeteria and yeah. kitchen. Okay, so just those two things will be in there. Right. Won't yep. be any space for any, anything else. Yeah, that's gonna, so it's going to be a full kitchen um, on the south side, and then the north side is going to be the new cafeteria. Uh, so they're, they're splitting, splitting it essentially right down the middle and then having space for both of those. Uh, to function, or both of those spaces to function within it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's talk schedule real quick. So uh, the, the goal and plan is to solicit bids starting next week to give us um, plenty of time to uh, involve the local market and get good feedback from them. Um, the, the bid opening is scheduled for 12-19, and then uh, once we get to that point, then we'll get into the contract award and procurement phase where we get everybody signed up and work through detailed plans of how we move through the space. Um, and then starting uh, in the, at the end of May uh, in 20, uh, 2020, that's when we'll get started with phase one construction. So that, that being the new addition work, so foundations, precast, uh, steel, a lot of the kind of the, the more um, front end type work that you'd see there. Uh, and that will continue into um, February. And then we'll start phase two construction, which is the renovation. So that'll be, you know, finish updates and interior spaces uh, for the, uh, the lower half of that drawing that I was showing earlier. So that's, that's when all of, all of that work starts taking place. So demo and uh, the refresh of, the, of those areas with, uh, excuse me, a, an anticipated completion uh, at, in August of 2021, end of August. Any questions on schedule or anything else with that project? Okay. Yes. Really All right. So R Riverside, um, that was uh, uh, approved by the Planning Commission in the same uh, meeting as Lowell was. That happened last week, and uh, we're preparing for bid solicitation uh, in mid-December, kind of a one-week offset from Lowell, so we're not uh, inundating the market with uh, too many bids to look at at one time. Um, get into the architectural plan review here. So on this page, uh, the, the phases uh, to kind of set up the organization of it. There's the new addition, which is the um, going to be the gym that you see kind of towards the top side of the page. And then uh, there is a new service entrance um, that's going on uh, towards the lower half or the bottom side of the page. Um, yeah, you can point to it. It's awesome. Nope. nope. Yeah. <laughs> so if it, it's just, it's one hallway away from the, the gym. So uh, those are the two main new additions that are going on to this building. And then the rest of the renovation is um, updates to interior spaces and finishes uh, that go along with them. And we've organized this project into um, five different alternates. Um, the first three are classroom updates um, and you know including them in, in the plan uh, if the budget allows. The fourth one is uh, refinishing the gym that's kind of the bottom left hand side of the drawing that you can see uh, up there now and then uh, the fifth one we'll get into that in a little more when we get into the site plan but that's a mill and overlay for uh, some asphalt in the uh, on the back side of the building any questions about this one there's only one floor here so this is only the only floor plan that I have uh, up there okay I'm gonna go to the site plan so site plan um, here we have uh, some landscaping updates and um, 
that we're making to the front of the building along with the removal of that entry canopy that's there now. It's this the detached metal awning that's there and that will get replaced with the um, the blue pile on the branding piece that we've got that to keep consistent across the, uh, the district as well. And then if you look at the uh, south half of the project, uh, there's going to be a mill and overlay for that parking lot that's um, to, that, uh, to that side of the building. And then uh, one of the alternates that we're considering or are going to consider is a mill and overlay of the, um, the asphalt that's going to wrap around that edge of the building to kind of tie it all together into the new asphalt that's going uh, where you see the basketball court now. So uh, looking at, at this drawing too on the right hand side of the drawing you can see that the new addition um, for the gym kind of outlined in the darker uh, the heavier weighted lining and then towards the just to the left of that you can see the dark outline of the new service um, addition as well. The entire Brainerd team will have a bird's eye view from our office on this project, so right. mark, mark the pressure will be on. Yep, we'll, we'll be able to watch it all happen right from our window, so it's, we're, we're located in a great spot. Um, so here, just to kind of help bring it all together again, you can see the new addition uh, towards uh, the back, and then if you look directly to the left of that, you can see the new addition of the service space and how that's accessed, uh, and then a Really, beyond that, it's the basketball court in the in the background. Otherwise, not uh, there haven't or there aren't any planned updates beyond or excuse me beyond the uh, the branding pylon and the removal of that canopy in front as well. So it's uh, less involved with the exterior of this project than others. So this might get be getting really into the weeds, but I see the the basketball court in the back. Mm -hmm. And the, the hoops, they look like they're removable or, or adjustable hoops. Is that what they, it is? They have, they have foundations that will okay. keep them there so they won't, uh, they won't move. Basketball coach right here. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. They have collapsible rims. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you can lower it to seven feet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's uh, look at the schedule for this one. Yep. Very similar schedule to Lowell on this project. Um, so looking to solicit bids or start that process in the middle of December, so 12-16, and then open the bids, um, that date plan for uh, the 9th of January at this time. Um, from there, getting into contract award and procurement, so again, setting up uh, you know, all the contractors, getting everybody into their detailed scopes of work. And then once we get into phase one, uh, that work starting uh, at the end of May 2020, and then um, wrapping up uh, just before the beginning of 2021, so December timeline there. And then phase two, the renovation for that uh, starting the following summer and then wrapping up uh, by the end of the school or the before the beginning of the school year there. Any so questions? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so the gym, <coughs> so phase one, that'll be the, that'll be the gymnasium will be part of that? Yes. So that'll be online. It'll be December or it'll be up Christmas. and complete, but we won't be able to use it if that's the question. At least uh, looking ahead right now, because there's still building tie-ins, we have to connect. You know, we've got to connect exterior systems. We have to um, we'll have to run finishes between the two spaces because they eventually will connect. But we'll have the core and the shell, so you'll have roofing and uh, the interior finishes for that space will be mostly done. But you'd have to travel through construction spaces to get to it. And be, um, so it won't be usable for, Correct. say, the students until right. when? Uh, right, yeah, right now that's the plan. When would it be usable for students? When would the plan be? Uh, when, when we open phase two. So when phase two is complete, we'll turn the whole building over. <laughs> oh, so it'll be, it. it'll be about life it. safety. It'll be yeah. fire protection, it. fire it. alarms. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yep. Those kinds of things. And we can still, we can look, we got some time to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there's, if there's ways we can make concessions and make that happen, we'll, we'll definitely consider it. But sure. But Thank at, you. At this time, the planning process will, we'll wait, we'll be, we'll be waiting till phase two is complete. True. Sure. Understood. It says bid opening day, January 9th. Is that the date? Correct. Correct. Okay. Two o'clock here. Two o'clock. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're good to go. Okay. Nice. Thank you so much. Any other questions at all for us?
Okay. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, the approval of the minutes from the regular school board meeting on November 13th. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Nelson and a second from Director Hagman. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now the consent calendar. Move to approve. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Haglin, a second from Director Blacklands. Discussion? I just had one thing that I wanted to <coughs> suggest and that is our, within our consent calendar on the FMLA, since that's a mandatory approval, um, I would like to suggest that we don't include that in our board packet as far as the names and reasons behind, thinking it's more of a confidential information, employee information, and I don't really see a need to have to have it okay. in our, in our um, board packets. Do you want anything in there as far as how many or? I yeah. personally don't need any of that, but okay. if others do, it's, it's, you know, by law we've got to, we have to approve anyway, so. Sure. I mm -hmm. think leaving it up to <clears throat> our HR manager. And okay, her decision was refined then. It would be my suggestion. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Okay. Okay, we have a first and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next up, our site reports. We have our student council update with Jenna Lee and Nolan Reynolds. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm a senior. Um, uh, right now, student council is planning um, Christmas ball, mm -hmm. and we just got done writing uh, Christmas cards for veterans, mm -hmm. and uh, We Scare Hunger, where we go around in the community and collect um, can or non-perishable goods for the mm -hmm. food shelf. Well, that's great. When is Christmas ball? Uh, December 14th. Yep. Nice. <coughs> I hope it's good weather. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really all we have on the table right now for things we're kind of doing um, through student council and then um, the class cabinets I know talk to them and they're all doing their own new things this year and prom is we're looking at some changes this year as far as Grand March um, not being at the high school but rather at the MP Center along where prom is held um, and then some differences where um, along with prom as far as planning, and it's usually up to the junior class cabinet to plan the prom, but this year we kind of changed it around a little bit so seniors could give their input on what they wanted to do for their senior prom. So, nice. yeah. Nice. If, if the Grand March is, is held at the MP Center, is, is there enough parking for Yep, that? so we would, um, we would be, one of the reasons we would be doing it is because we'd be looking at running a shuttle either way um, due to construction at the high school. Um, and parking there. Um, so we thought instead of running a shuttle to the high school and then to the MP Center, um, it looks to be in our budget, we would be able to do it at the MP Center and then we would still run a shuttle um, from a nearby location um, like Cub Foods or Census or somewhere over there um, to, to the MP Center. And so, and then we would still have parking. There'd be like a carpool incentive, like four or more people um, would get parking at the MP Center. Great, thank you. That's a good idea. Where are you having the Christmas ball this year? Um, at Craigans, mm -hmm. okay. the okay. Sports Center there. So. Awesome. That's awesome. It's a good location. That's thank, you. Thank, All right. you. thank you. Thank you for your report. Thank you. Okay, next up, world's best workforce, Mr. Murtha.
Too many toys. Good evening. Thank you. Um, what this evening is is the presentation of the 2019-2020 World's Best Workforce Plan for Brainerd Public Schools. This plan is offered in fulfillment of Minnesota State Statute uh, 120B11, Subdivision 1. This constitutes the final statement of the data that was presented to you in September around the continuous improvement retreat. The goals that we set that drive the continuous retreat are the same goals that we submit to the state as part of the plan. So what we're attempting to do is not just fulfill the intent of the, uh, the, the, the letter of the legislation, but to make sure that we're leveraging this as a comprehensive long-term planning structure to support and improve teaching and learning with the goal of producing the world's best workforce. It's intended to serve as the foundation of our continuous improvement process. So all that staff development work that we do, the identification of those pieces around common assessments, formative and summative, the RTI, MTSS work, the social emotional learning work, and the elementary running records work, these are all the actions we're taking to make the goals identified in the world's best workforce plan achievable. So that's the, the short version of that. What the report asks us to do is identify the systems and structures of the district that we use in order to make sure that we have them and that we're leveraging them for students good. So it comes down to five real clear goals. Uh, kindergarten readiness, third grade literacy, achievement gap closure, college and career readiness, high school graduation, and attendance. These are the elements that we track as indicators of success for the district. There's two I want to pull out and just address a little bit more specifically. The, the rest are fairly self-explanatory. The achievement gap closure goal. The goal one that we chose, we have multiple achievement gaps as you know, but we chose the special ed achievement gap because it's the largest achievement gap that we have as contrasted with students in poverty which is the largest population of students with an achievement gap. So that's why that one was chosen. For college and career readiness, we're currently using the all four benchmarks of the ACT as our indicator for that. That at the moment is probably the best indicator we have, uh, but this has been a kind of an ongoing conversation for the district as what's the best way to identify this. The ACT and exams like that are really targeted at a particular audience that's going on to a four-year school. It does not completely encompass all the students going on to vocational, technical, community college, and a lot of training opportunities that are very much needed in the workforce and are very legitimate outcomes of an education. So there's work for us, room for us to work on that for there. And those are the two I wanted to pull out uh, just because they're ongoing conversations and involved us making some choices about that. Do you have questions about the world's best workforce plan? It doesn't look like it. <coughs> Directors yeah, Nelson and Campbell have, have <laughs> heard all this many, many times now between here and DAC. <laughs> Tim, maybe at some point in time it would be interesting. It, it's fun to see the, the goals from 18 to 19. Um, <clears throat> but even if we could have like a you know, five years or so. Maybe that's in here and I didn't see it, but, um, you know, looking back. The data that you're looking for is present in the tables starting on page four, but it wouldn't identify it as the goal. The, the things that we measure as the goal, read well by third grade, kindergarten readiness, we haven't changed those success measures. So if you pull that data out, it's certainly the data that's MCA data that's in there. But I can give you a five-year history on that with no problem at the next board meeting. You would see some of that clearly articulated in the district achievement summary, which was submitted in September, that gives the multiple year and the multiple grade breakdowns of performance relative to the uh, state accountability tests. But I can be a little bit more specific and condense that data for you. Do 
you have more? Or? Nope, I don't. Oh, good. Okay. You, the the no format of the questions. report has been the same for five years, so I think you've seen it before. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for your report. Very good. And I think I'm up next for board policy as well. Um, Corey's in between. Oh, Corey's in between. I'm sorry. Yep. I will lug it all back and lug it all back up in a minute. <laughs> Community education you update. And Corey's right there. Not violate the agenda. It's a lot of Reynoldses on one agenda. <laughs> I taught them everything I know. There are a lot of Reynolds. Yes. Short and sweet and try not to blush too much. Good evening. I thought I'd just come tonight and give a little overview of the community education department. I've been here um, many times, sorry about that, talking about different aspects, but I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the entire umbrella of community ed. So I think people often don't realize the scope of all the programs we have running, so here we go. Uh, here's just a little idea of everything that falls under that big old community ed umbrella. Lots of different programs. Uh, the whole idea, of course, is lifelong learning. So from practically pre-birth to beyond, we have something for, I like to say, every member of the family. So you can see that there. And I'll just go through these quickly. Uh, here's the, just a little desktop snapshot view of our early childhood programs. Um, you can see 345 children from those newest babies on up to three years, or actually five years old, and their family members are served in our ECFE program that takes place over at the Brainerd Learning Center. Um, it's a great program. I, one of the most frequent requests I get is, can we have ECFE programs for um, teenagers? And unfortunately, our ECFE funding can't be used that way, but I... Get the feeling. I get. I understand. <laughs> um, but parents appreciate, and I know when I participated myself, it was a great time to practice going to school for a little one, and also to be with other parents at that same life stage. So it's a great introduction to the school district as well. Uh, 281 students are involved in integrated um, school readiness preschool for ages three to five years old. We have four sites for that. You see the Learning Center, Washington, Baxter, and Nishwa. And I should say when I, when I say integrated, I mean special ed and regular ed. We have um, most of our classrooms are, are integrated with both to give um, really just as a preparation for being in school. Uh, we conducted last year 494 early childhood screenings. This is for children three years old to five years old. This is a required um, developmental check for students, or for children really. And we also here in Brainerd use it as a way to register kids for kindergarten. So it's always very exciting for them to come in and um, get their hearing and their vision tested and then um, do what seems to them to be fun little tasks, but really gives us a lot of information about how they're tracking developmentally. We do get a lot of um, referrals um, for kids to be checked out by special ed. Just It's just a great sort of dipstick on how a student is doing. And then if there is a concern, we have lots of time before kindergarten to address that. So it's a great program. and. Parents seem to appreciate getting the feedback on how their children are doing. And then, see, I just threw together just a little idea of what the staff for that program looks like. Um, we're serving upwards of 500 um, students and their families. It does take a small, dedicated army to to uh, do that. So that's our assistant community and director, Tony Flowers, is there. We have a coordinator. Um, the bodies add up to about two full-time secretaries to support the administrative functions of the building, 14 certified teachers, nine paras, one PTO, and then, of course, um, that whole gamut of partners on the special ed side, too. So it's, a, it's a big staff doing great work with, um, with our youngest learners. It's so fun to see them in the fall when they come in and they don't know how to use the scissors, and by the end of the year, they're just cutting like crazy. Sometimes their hair, but that, maybe that's just the Reynolds children. 
I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I sort of put these in chronological order, so in my mind, the next step, um, once you sort of graduate out of early childhood and, and into um, into big kids school, elementary school, comes child care. So this program, very familiar to many people, Fun and Friends, um, this is their 31st year serving, I'm sure at this point it's got to be tens of thousands of students who have gone through the program over the years. We start early um, in kindergarten and pre-K plus serving. We have 33 students in our kinder club program last year. That was all day, every day, um, kindergarten prep child care program. And then we also had 40 students in our pre-K plus program, which is the wraparound. So that pairs with our school readiness classroom. They go to school readiness part of the day and then kinder club pre-K plus for the other half of the day. And the, their kindergarten teachers tell us that's the best of both worlds. That's, that's when we see the most growth in students, when they're in that really great high quality programming all day long. And it serves families very well as well. Last year we had just under 600 students in grades K through four at Fun and Friends here in this building and up at the Niswa building for before and after school care. Um, and on school days, this place is buzzing in the summertime. All summer long, there are kids on playgrounds and in the gym and in the cafeteria. Uh, 64 students in middle school participate in the senior leaders programs where they get leadership opportunities and then a safe place to be outside of school. The staff for this program is a coordinator, uh, four lead supervisors, each with sort of their own part of the programming to take a lead on, six supervisors, 60 program assistants, um, three foster grandparents through the Lutheran Social Services Program, and then six youth <coughs> volunteers. These would be senior leaders who have decided that they might have an interest in working at Fun and Friends when they're old enough, and so they start by volunteering with us. Um, and those numbers are so loud, large, because we are dealing with state mandated ratio. We are a certified site to accept um, child care assistance through the county, and so they are very strict about our student to, to staff ratios, which is um, the joy you would imagine it to be in a tight labor market. So any teenagers you know, or college students, or um, co recent graduates looking for a job, if they'd like to work with kids, Fun and Friends is a great place to work. Uh, next then is our youth development program. Uh, these are really all our out-of-school time programs for K through 12th graders um, that uh, are not childcare, so kind of the other side of the coin. According to the state report we, we submitted to MDE this year, we served just under 10,000 students um, in programs like driver's education. Um, that's probably our number one program for especially high school students. Um, Unified Warriors, another program that takes uh, special needs students and pairs them with a regular education student and, and they do um, social skill building activities together. We run lots of youth sports, uh, camps, things like that, really anything for any student um, outside of the season, that, that season and in the summer we would run a camp for that. And then lots of clubs and classes. Um, I can't remember what baking club has been, culinary club has been doing lately, but I get to see the ingredients and sometimes see the final product when there's extras in the office. So <laughs> exciting, exciting stuff. So I take it students are counted multiple times in that. Group. Yes, sorry, thank you. Um, other than, uh, I should say all our numbers from here forward are turnstile numbers. So our best customers are our repeat customers. Um, <laughs> And it, at this point, we just don't have a great way to count unique yeah. individuals. No. Yeah. Um, but. So the staff here, we have a full-time coordinator. We have a coordinate, somebody who coordinates just the driver's ed piece because there's lots of moving pieces with students who need their um, the classroom work and the behind the wheel and all that. Uh, two secretaries support this um, program. We have two enrichment facilitators, one at Harrison and one at Riverside, who work with our coordinator to put together activities for, at those specific schools. I know there's um, a little STEM club going at Riverside. Um, I believe Garfield has had a military families club. Other things, um, 
like that, but we found it's really effective to have somebody who works in that building during the day be willing to stay and do something with students after school. Okay, next up is our uh, Insight program. This is for adults with disabilities, and um, just under 2,900 adults participated in social activities that were customized for adults with cognitive and developmental disabilities. And what's so great about this program is students who have participated in, in our programs here in Brainerd um, very often come back to, to us through this program. So many of them will talk to us about having had our Transitions Plus or our STARS program teachers as their teachers. So um, they typically have a connection to the district already and it's fun to see them continue with that. Um, we are one of the most successful programs like this that I've been a part of um, and I, I'm biased. But my proof that I would point to is that if you should ever get out to Craigens on a night when there's an insight dance, which is the most um, well-attended activity that happens almost every month throughout the year um, out at Craigens, you will find people coming to that program from St. Cloud to all the way up to Walker, from Mora all the way to Wadena, because there just aren't opportunities like that, a lot of them. So they come here. So I always think that's... Uh, a testament to the quality of the programs we run. We have one part-time coordinator, um, our two secretaries support them, and then there are a little handful of volunteers um, who come and, and help with the activities that they do, who will dance and hand out cookies at the dances or whatever's needed. Our adult services program, you see here we have uh, a the number of adults who are involved in enrichment activities and volunteer opportunities at the school. This is a really broad category, adult services, because it does encompass um, people who maybe came and made sushi one night or learned to dance or do yoga, and then who came and read to third graders or helped hand out programs at the Veterans Day, things at the buildings. Um, it also includes people who come um, to events where our facilities have been rented out to other groups, um, Lakes Area Music Festival, the basketball, or all the sports associations. You can see there are 84 such groups last year, and almost 110,000 people came into the building. I was just speaking today at our advisory council meeting that I really like this number, and I like to see it be a really big, big number, because this is the one that says, to me, if nothing else, people come to our buildings to watch their kids in a con kids or grandkids in a concert or um, an athletics game. It, it's kind of that catch-all category um, that tells me really community ed has, brings people who wouldn't otherwise come to our buildings to our buildings. So uh, We have an adult services coordinator and um, two, our same two secretaries and our instructors here who help make these adult services happen. And these are separate, however, from the adult basic education program. These are adults who are working on obtaining a GED, um, maybe want to improve their AccuPlacer score, that's the test to the college placement test, um, working on college readiness skills, and in an area that's growing rapidly, not just for K-12, but also for adult basic ed, English as a second language. Every time I hear Tim Murtha talk about our ESL student population, I immediately think about their family members at home who may need to, that have that same need for ESL services, and we provide that through adult basic education. The program is headquartered at CLC here in Brainerd. Um, it's been a great partnership with the college. Um, and we are also uh, part of a consortium, or we are the host of a consortium uh, for ABE, where we work with um, Pine River Bacchus, uh, Pequot Lakes, and Crosby Ironton, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as Brainerd. And in a couple of those other districts, we have some satellite sites, um, different activities. In Crosby, we ran a class this summer for um, the para pro test, so the test to become a para. Um, it was a class to help people who typically have not been able to pass that test. 
to get them the skills, not just to pass the test, but also to come into a school district and be ready to be an excellent para. And I understand Crosby Ironton has hired two or three paras from that class. So it's been successful. And we're working with um, Kathy Nolt and her PTO to hopefully do some things at Harrison for their parent population <coughs> that maybe have some needs in this area as well. You can see our staff here is a lead teacher, a full-time teacher, three part-time teachers, and one secretary. And then there are many more. These are just a couple of the other programs that don't quite fit into any other area. Baxter Parks and Rec, we're in a um, joint powers agreement with them where Community Ed um, runs their Parks and Rec department for the cities, for the city of Baxter. Uh, communications, um, both community ed communications and the district communications. Uh, we have a hand in that. And then health services with our three district nurses and our nine building nurses, all part of the community ed. So all these people are working together. Again, a small army of people working to make, to realize our goal to make people's lives better. And we do that by focusing on these four main areas of excellent customer service, highly skilled staff, a visible public presence, and then reducing barriers to participation. So that's community ed for you. Looks like you got a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm losing my voice, I guess. That's yeah, really amazing the growth over the last few years, mm -hmm. just all the different activities, and what's going on, the number of people that are impacted by, by you and, and uh, the staff. Cora, are you connected at all with the um, Children's Museum? Are you uh, dialed in, in? In a couple of different ways. Yeah, I know um, uh, Tawny Flowers with Early Childhood has been more involved than I have been, okay. she, meaning she's been to a few more meetings than I've been to. Um, but yes, we're aware of the plans and we've separately spoken to them about how the school district could potentially okay. interact, not just the school district, but families could interact with the Children's Museum. Okay, yep. good. I have a question too on our early childhood yeah. screenings. Do we ever look at how those go up and down and see if they compare at all to our kindergarten numbers? In Did what we, way? Oh, well, just if as they go higher, higher, if there's any correlation, I guess I should say. You think there would be so? Yeah, I mean, we certainly, that's sort of a, if we don't, if, if a parent hasn't come to us for ECFE or, or, um, special ed services or something, screening is really sort of our first contact as a district right. with them. So we certainly collect that information and we wor start working it into our, um, into the appropriate kindergarten cohort, if that makes sense. But we, where our birth counts matter, and maybe this is more what you're asking, is in ECFE. We are actually, we have to every year um, submit to the state our birth counts for each age zero to five years old. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we are aware of that. I send that information to Marcy so she can be working in to her budget calculations if it fits. But yeah, we, we keep an eye on those numbers because they affect ECFE well, funding. Because yeah, 494 is a lot higher than what our kindergarten counts have been. So. Yes. That's right. yeah. yes. so it's just kind and, of and that would be, that would be, um, Three well, five years. Those kids, yeah. Yeah, it but could they only do it once. once. So over they only period, do it once. Over a period of years, it should kind right. of be the average number. I, I think it are, tracks are pretty closely. Them, do you know if they all come? I mean, they obviously don't, but when they come and be screened, they're in our district. We don't do it for other districts. It, no. Like okay. you can't, I don't think you can open enroll for screening. You would screen in the district that you um, live in, okay. but you could at some point between screening and actually actually going to kindergarten, open enroll to another place or move. Yeah. Um, we get screenings well, from other places. we know places. that we have open enrollments out of the district and we have private schools and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but mm -hmm. it might be another data point to put into our. It's, it's definitely us. something we watch closely. Yeah. We know we want to be around that 500 mark. That's, yeah. that's what our census data tells us is a cohort uh, okay. or, or a class of kindergartners. It's usually around 500, and so that's what we shoot for. Yeah. Corey, <clears throat> I, I've had the, the wonderful opportunity to get to know a little bit more of and how 
community education operates throughout the, the Brainerd Lakes area. And uh, as, a, as a parent with young children and, uh, and surrounded by a number of people with children, um, it's been so exciting to see how community education and all the different pieces underneath your umbrella just permeates all aspects of, of family life throughout, throughout the community. And I'm just so proud to see all of these pieces uh, working throughout the community uh, across the year. And uh, just thank you for all you do and thank all your you. staff, and hopefully they, they can feel encouraged with how important they are to our community. Thank you. I'll share that. All right. Thank you, Corey. Uh, next up, we have new business. We have seven action items, the first being the <coughs> approval for the construction documents and to authorize the construction manager to solicit bids for Riverside. Is there a motion? Also so moved. A second. Okay, we have a first from Director Blacklance, a second from Director Nelson. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Next up, the approval for the construction documents and to authorize construction manager to solicit bids for the Lowell Elementary School. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Nelson, a second from Director Blacklands. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next up, the approval for the annual board book subscription. Renewal for December 14th, 2019 to December 14th, 2020 at the cost of $2,100. Did you have anything to say? I really don't. It's just to keep it's board It's our book. usual yep, thing. That's how we communicate with our public and the actions that are going to take place at each board meeting. <coughs> I noticed on a board book when you log in now there's like an enhanced board book or something. There's two levels of board book. There's like board book classic and then uh, the enhanced version. Oh, I didn't notice. They've enhanced some of the features. Okay. I haven't gone in and used them. Because so I just do the classic. I, we can't do the enhanced. I do as well. That's all I've okay. used. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I only have one shirt. It's because we don't live in town. No, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it might Probably be, it it might be something to look to at. To look into to yeah. see if it's something that makes it easier even to use. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll move to approve as presented. I'll Thank second. You. Thank you. We have a first from Director Hagland, a second from Director Blacklance. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And next up, the approval for the 2019-2020 Rural Minnesota SEP contract for $12,000. And I believe we, we renew this every year, but the, the price tag is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so we need board approval. I don't, we didn't know if there'd be any questions, but yeah, it's for 12,000. It was 12,000 last year. The previous year it was less than that. Um, they had went from three to five days, and Heidi can speak to the services that they provide. So these are our career advisory counsel counselors that are located at Brainerd High School. We now have two counselors that are working at Brainerd High School, working on career and um, college counseling. We partner with uh, Rural Minsup, and we use our SourceWell dollars as well. We use about $55,000 of our dollars allocated from SourceWell to also fund those two positions to support our high school students. Very good. Okay, so the 12000 is what we pay of it? Yep, so we're contributing 12000 and then SourceWell's contributing an additional 55000 to have both of those okay. staff. So when you talk about creative ways to make sure we're getting um, career exploration and college exploration in front of our students, that's how we're doing that. Okay. And it's already included in our budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What exactly do they do? They meet with students, so they take them through a variety of... Um, there's different interest inventories if you think about um, career, uh, counseling. Yeah, career counseling, college counseling, different options like that. Uh, job exploration, they do some uh, partnerships. They connect them also with Bridges Academy. 
So an expansion of what our high school counselors are doing, but we reduced high school counselors. So this is a way to put that service back with our students. Okay. So are they actually our employees then? No, they're, they're not. Just strictly contracted that we pay. Yep, uh, they're Wilson. actually employees of Rural Minsep. Okay. And we, in this contract, we give them an agreement that we'll provide that office space, access to students. Um, so who supervises them? Uh, there's staff from Rural Minsep. Um, Andrea Ruska is really involved as well, as well as the guidance counselors at Brainerd High School. So do, what kind of a degree do they have? Do they have a school counselor degree? You know, I think it, it varies. Okay. So, so some kind of mm -hmm. four-year degree. Well, it's, it's in that background of education. typically guidance counseling education. Okay. But again, they're coming through rural men's up. Okay. Is, it, or is it the same two individuals that we've had for a while? or is there My understanding is we've had the consistency. In the past couple of years, we've expanded again. And you had indicated the costing was different. It, the 12,000. She said when she came up, it was 12,000 last year, and again, it's 12,000 oh, this sorry. year, but before that, it was 10. I was wrong. I oh, thought it was okay. last year. So, again, 10. we offset that cost with our dollars that we get allocated from Sourcewell. So, this was an innovative funding project that came through Sourcewell. It's been quite a while ago, five or six years ago, of how they could expand um, that career uh, connection. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, school come, it didn't come through the board previously because it was under that $10,000. So. And this is in, in addition to the guidance counselors that we have? Correct. But we've reduced guidance counseling staff at the high school over the past few years. And what they've done is um, Andrea's tapped into, again, options that are available through Sourcewell to bring career counselors back in through Rural Mensa. Is there a motion? A motion to approve the... That contract with Rural Minnesota Sub. I'll second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Blacklance, a second from Director Nelson. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next up, the approval of resolution for the adoption of the ISD 181 world's best workforce plan that Mr. Murtha presented to us. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Haglin, a second from Director Nelson. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying. Oh, roll call vote. I don't see it on there. Right here. Tom Haglin? Yes. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Is that a yes? Well, yes. Did you have a question? No, just catching up with the roll call vote. Okay, so, I'm yeah. sorry. All right. All in favor. Thank you. And next up, the approval of the second and final reading of MSBA policies as listed here. I know you had questions last time, Ruth. Were they answered for you this time? Um, yes, they made some changes. So thank you for doing that. Need more cowbell. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I think so. um, I think the two ch the change that we wanted to point out uh, in response to uh, Director Nelson's request from the last board meetings and board policy 601 uh, concerning the, the inclusion of language that is standard between policy 601 and 603 on the district obligations through screening of students who are not reading at grade level by grade three. There are two different statutes in play, 125A56 subdivision one and 120B12 subdivision two. One policy is really directed towards one, one policy is directed towards the other, even though uh, 
uh, essentially they want the same thing. So we took the most comprehensive language out of policy 603 and duplicated it in policy 601. So the message that any staff member would get if they were to look up policy in terms of what they're supposed to do, they would see the same obligation. One is it deals with uh, you have to screen for mandatory summer school. Others is you have to screen for any student not reading at grade level by third grade. If they're not reading at grade level by third grade, they're probably a candidate for summer school or vice versa. You know, so there's just some overlap in those policies there. So we've standardized that language. That was the only change that we brought forth since last month to any of the policies. Just one other question on that. I, I know you got the language from the Minnesota School Boards Association. Do you let them know that there's some inconsistency in their language? or? Um, I mean, no, I, we, we can reach back to them. This is probably the case where two different lawyers working for the same company looked at two different statutes and wrote two, and wrote two different policies. Uh, yeah. It's just nice to have consistent. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I think their assumption is that whoever's in charge of policy has a comprehensive understanding of that because this is actually raised again in policy 623. Okay. Um, as a cross-referenced policy, and it shows up as such. Uh, but our language is consistent. We're good. And it's included in our read well by third grade plan. Right. Okay. You've seen the dyslexia plan. Uh, Mrs. Bjorgi presented it in June uh, as part of the read well plan. Okay, I'll move approval of all of those policies. Do you want me to? <laughs> I think we can read them off the sheet. Okay. Policy 414, 419. 424, 532, 601, 603, 611, 615, 623. And a, a motion for the approval of the second and final reading of those policies. Thank you. A second. Thank you. Okay, we have a first from Director Nelson, a second from Director Blacklands. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next up, the approval of the benefits package for the school board members as presented. You have that in front of you. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Haglin, a second from Director Nelson. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have a few thoughts on that. Um, this is a little this is a little different than than I'll admit. This is a bit of a surprise. What's what's before me today, <clears throat> in terms of what I was understanding, was more of a at least a potential working document. Um, the second thing is that. I'll, I'll be very, very honest that when I ran for school board um, over the number of years that I have, um, I did so without, without the understanding of any type of benefit I would receive from that. I, uh, I struggle in a mighty way receiving any type of benefit in the position that that I ran for simply to serve our community and to serve our students, especially at the potential risk or expense of teachers or activities or opportunities for our children. An example that I have is um, my daughter participates in, in Math Masters and had the opportunity to participate in Math Masters this past year. And uh, it's a great opportunity. We won't unpack what that is. But the bottom line is not everybody that m may have been eligible or had the, had the ability to participate in Math Masters were able to. My understanding, uh, due to certain cutbacks or, or, or dollars in the end, um, not all students were allowed or given that opportunity. I have a hard time taking any type of benefit as a board member that in any way um, down the road or currently could take away an opportunity from a child in our school district. 
Again, I, I, I did not run for school board to receive any type of benefit. I understand that that may have been the way in, in the past, but I'd love for the board to, to reconsider this or to even table this until we can have the members of the full board have, have a full and robust, robust discussion of this. Just finally, um, it's hard for me to, uh, to, to move on this particular agenda item knowing that, that um, a student may be deprived of any type of opportunity. Okay, I wanted to read a statement here that um, Bob Nystrom wrote. He sent it. He couldn't be here tonight. He goes, Dear Superintendent Larson and fellow board members, I first want to apologize for not being able to attend tonight's meeting. I have to attend attend to a medical issue within my family and have to be out of town. I want you to know that I support this change in our benefits and would have voted for it if I had been at the meeting. I believe that we need to support this change as it will help the district to save money. It also communicates to our employee groups that we are willing to take a cut in compensation for the betterment of the district. Our current stipend of $350 per month has not been changed in 33 years. And with this cut in benefits, it will help the district to further achieve its financial goals. I encourage the board to support this change in benefits with a yes vote tonight. Warm regards, Bob. And Reed didn't um, have an opportunity to comment. I guess um, my my position on the board, and, um, and and still learning the process, and so my apologies, is I, I would I'm really curious in terms of the process here. Um, I would really urge the board to consider a, a third option, which is where we would just um, receive a compensation of, of a of the stipend but not compensation of any type of health benefit or dental benefit. And I'm not sure of the process on how, in which we, we move that way. Okay. And I think Director Blackcloud sets the direction we're moving. Um, we just are taking our time so that we don't hurt any board member that currently relies on that health insurance so they have time to find other health insurance. And I completely understand and respect that. Um, I'm a new board member. So um, again, like I mentioned, I, I didn't I didn't expect that, and uh, but I don't. In, in all due respect, I don't think we provide that same opportunity for students or faculty if we have to be faced with with potent or future cuts, or like referring back to math masters where some students simply didn't have that opportunity this past year. That's a struggle that that. Um, it's hard to me to move off of that that spot. I don't believe that there were any board members that realized there were benefits. I didn't even realize there was a stipend when I ran. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, we have a first and a second. So we'll just go ahead and vote on that if there's no other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay, so then the motion fails, and so we'll just... Motion the, the vote. passes with the three to one. Oh, okay, I didn't know you could with... I thought you'd have to have four. No, you have a quorum of We have a group. quorum of four. So, okay. Yeah. All we right have then. a quorum here today. So right. three of two mm -hmm. one is a pass. Okay, I don't think I've ever been here when it was only four people here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, motion passes then. Moving on here, the informational sec section of our meeting, uh, curriculum report. Mr. Murtha, did you have anything else you wanted to share tonight? Nothing further. Nothing further, thank you. Uh, business services report. Marcy, I know you had some numbers to share. So you have two financial reports in your packet tonight. Um, 
one of them is actually June, so we didn't report on June's because we were closing and we finally got that done, the audit is done. So uh, a couple things just to note on there, overall compared to the budget, 18-19, um, we were 1.29% difference from budget under budget, budget. so that was good. Um, you guys will see in the upcoming meetings when the audit gets presented that um, we came in better than what we had projected, which is even better. Um, and there's nothing really else to note on there unless you have questions on June. Oops, okay. Uh, the other report is the October report. And as always, I exclude, you know, the funds that are inconsistent with prior years. So I took out the construction fund and the debt service fund. And in 18-19, we were at about 21.24%. And um, this year, we're at 21.79. So a little about a half percent difference. So that's good. We're tracking normal. Nothing else really to note on there uh, unless you guys had any questions on that. All right. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Okay. Superintendent's report. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that's all right. Um, I just want to begin tonight um, by updating you on a few things. One is that uh, we definitely are at the point in our building project where uh, we are doing furniture inventories. And I know the team of people here from ICS, along with Woods S. Smith Nolting and so on, have been going to every one of the buildings that are um, currently looking at their furniture, their fixtures, and their equipment and doing an inventory of where we are and the needs are uh, moving forward so um, that we're sure that um, we have the equipment that we're going to need to staff each of the buildings as, as they get finalized. Again, I want to reiterate that we are doing an inventory of what we have because we are going to use what we have um, to start. And then what the plan is, is that as far as FF&E, um, Damien is really putting it in a, a big bucket and we're going to prioritize the highest needs as they go and have some standardization across the the district and so I thank Reed and I thank Damien and, and all the project managers for the work that you're doing because I know you're putting an extensive amount of hours with the principals so thank you to the principals as well for and the staff for uh, letting you come into the classrooms and and do that work um, also we're doing some work right now with looking at the Performing Arts Center and Corey and I are meeting the next couple of weeks to to look at uh, She's done just an extensive amount of work on that, and uh, we hope to pull together some ideas to bring forward to the board very soon uh, to look at it. Um, a little bit ago, I talked about that we met with the Brainerd uh, City Planning Commission, and um, I, I said this already, but I really do want to reiterate that all of the, the communities, whether it's the Brainerd City Council and Planning Commission, the Baxter City Council Planning Commission, or NISWA, Everyone has just been so wonderful to work with throughout this process, and I'm sure we'll continue that collaborative spirit as we move forward to provide the best uh, facilities that we possibly can in uh, surrounding areas. So it's been a pleasure to work with all of those groups. Um, I also want to take just a couple of minutes today to, um, to recognize a few things that have happened in the, in the district. I want to thank... Director Blacklance and Ashley Ingebrigtsen and Director Kern as well for the wonderful powwow that took place at CLC about a week and a half ago and just the beautiful dedication that um, they had towards the college and towards K-12 at the Brainerd Public Schools. It was um, really heartwarming to walk around to do to be dancing around the gymnasium and have all these people uh, recognizing the education and the hard work that all of our teachers and our staff do each and every day on behalf of our children and our community. And I say thank you to that. And I also want to say thank you that when you looked up in the audience this year, there were so many staff members that came. Um, Heidi, I know you and I both said that as uh, we participated in it how heartfelt that was to have so many people there supporting our school, and so thank you for that. Um, also, the other night, um, many of us had the opportunity to attend the chamber dinner to look at the incredible 
businesses that we have in our community, the work that everybody um, does together, the new businesses that are coming to, to downtown Brainerd. And it's just um, so heartfelt to see how things just continue to grow and get better and better and better. And um, it seems like at a point we're the best we can be, but it seems like we just keep getting better and better. And so it's very, very fun. Um, with that, all of the dates and such are identified in the board meeting, um, in the agenda, and so on. And I can let uh, our chairperson talk about those a little bit. But I know on behalf of the entire school district we just and the Board of Education, we just want to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. And um, just we are so thankful for the wonderful education and the many educators and administrators and board members and everybody for the work that's done to provide the highest quality education possible. So happy Thanksgiving. That's my report. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo the happy Thanksgiving. Um, a comment my pastor made Sunday was, don't look at what you don't have, but instead be thankful for what you do have. So with that, enjoy your families and mm -hmm. dinner and what you do together with them. Um, the district offices will be closed on the 28th and the 29th. We'll have some tours on December 2nd, project oversight December 3rd, another tour on the 9th, as well as our truth in taxation on December 9th at 6 p.m. in our regular school board meeting. Then our bid openings will start after that. Um, and we are going to go into closed session. Um, closed pursuant to Minnesota Statutes 13D.03 for labor negotiation strategy. We need a motion. I'll make a motion to move into closed session. Thank you. Second.